it is my great pleasure to be addressing to a large audience today on this webinar however i feel sorry that i cannot see your charming and attractive faces have eye to eye contact and spontaneous laughter at my jokes you all have an advantage as an audience you can fall asleep you can play with your you can give romantic looks to each other but i won't be able to see you during my very first lecture at sitco on behalf of ambuja cement at navi mumbai one elderly professional in the first row fell fast asleep later i could hear him snore i have not i dare not make any efforts to wake him up because he was a very senior professional to my surprise when the lecture was over and question and answers session started he was the first to lift up his hand to ask me a question i replied to him that you want the answer from me in sleeping snoring or normal mode he told me that i can answer in any mode but he would prefer a normal mode so this was the problem when i delivered my first lecture now we go to the presentation my lecture covers a few precautions to achieve the defect free construction and maintenance it was not possible to cover all tips and precautions learned during the 46 years in 45 minutes i have made my lecture very simple but if you can follow and implement all points our country and our customers will economically benefit you will find you will not find these points in one single textbook it is out of textbooks my students at i will appreciate this lecture next can you go to the next slide please i am very fond of roses however the roses you see on the screen are from the bushard garden in victoria canada great experience of growing roses and was very fond of name the one you see on the top row center is called careless love it is called careless love because no two roses on the same plant are same they are different from each other this is something like the opinion shared by engineers they are different from each other however i have made a mention that a structure is like a beautiful rose but our mistakes are like the thorns on the rose plant giving the end user the pain and discomfort talking about thorns there was a rose plant in our hostel eight yellow colored rose was called peace and why it was called peace because in the entire plant you don't even see a single thorn so i hope we construct structures like that which do not show, give any pain and discomfort to our customers next portland concrete most misunderstood material but at the same time it is more most preferred 
material in many applications. Some of the pain points are as follows. Non-compliance, next. Non-compliance of specification standards. of most of the construction materials. Next. The non-compliance comes about due to ignorance. It is observed that many supervisors and contractors do not read the specification and standards properly. Incorrect concrete material specification, for example, many a times in chloride and sulfate environment, recommendations such as use sulfate resistant cement is specified and that is not correct correct specification without considering the environmental conditions is carelessness many or most often the consultant or the designer is not aware of the environmental conditions existing where the structure is being constructed and therefore he does not specify the correct specification and i call it carelessness proportion of different concrete materials not designed or batched properly is definitely negligence at the site so the supervisor at site needs to proportion the materials as per the computerized mix design and ensure that it is batched correctly generally high water to cement ratio is used to get workability which is stupidity because if you have high water to cement ratio your concrete will never be durable non-compliance of maximum and minimum cement limits of the concrete standard is again very important and due to sheer ignorance people miss out this specification next now i give human analogy to materials well i have brought a rural family because rural family is larger than the urban family and number of materials now involved in concrete are much more than the rural family i call the head of the family cement because not because i have worked in ambuja cement for some time but it is because cement is the most wanted as well as sometimes criticized as a material and same thing is true for the head of the family water i compare with the larla beta or the pampered child the eldest son in the family and whenever you pamper a child the problem occurs that he takes the advantage like people add extra water for getting workability and spoil the durability of the concrete and if you encourage too much pampering then it spoils the durability of the family aggregates fine and coarse are like family i mean children in the family often produce in our country in large numbers without much quality control admixtures are very important members of the family so i compare the daughter in laws with the various types of admixtures it is very important to build up a compatibility with cement and all the other materials especially the mother in law in the family that i compare with a pozzolanic material called flash 
Then we have other materials like fibers and also a beautiful material which is generally used in high performance concrete, the ultra fine material, which comes as an ultra fine slag, ultra fine cement, or micro silica. The ultra fine material imparts cohesiveness to the concrete when it is still green and fresh. A small child born in the family often helps cohesiveness between the family members and create good environment in the family. The ultra fine material also helps in giving higher strength to the concrete. But the most important aspect is all materials in concrete must be consistent. Then only the family of materials can sustain and give good durability. Good watertight, durable, and trouble free construction can only happen if there is good design, good specification, and proper layout and detail done in done prior to construction so all these are very important issues full attention must be given by the tra trained skilled workers under proper supervision during the construction or alterations stroke repairs i have often observed that the rara act gives very great stress on training the skilled workers but if we, one does not train the engineers or supervisors it has no meaning because he is ultimately the engineer or the supervisor is ultimately responsible to give quality of the structure and make it trouble free and this is the missing link in rara which i have observed some of the main points slender sections like canopies fins parapets which form the external part of the structure and which take a lot of beating from the rain and other weathering effects are often not constructed properly dense reinforcement at beam column junctions must be properly planned and, and one must install the reinforcement in such a way that you are able to place the concrete through the joint without any segregation cantilever projections on external walls like the ones which i have mentioned in the point number one inadequate quality and quantity of reinforcement steel low grade of concrete specified results in high water to cement ratio and therefore poor durability compatibility issues between materials like i discussed in the earlier slide is very very important a material need not be of good quality or bad quality it has to be consistent and compatible with all the other materials next 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 non compliance causes macro and micro defects when the capillary go back when the capillary pores are large the porosity is higher the problem of durability is poor but there are micro voids also caused whatever you do whatever you try to uh, use the best materials possible if one is not particular about the practices there are likely that more and more voids 
are induced in concrete. For example, like the entrap air, sometimes even micro cracks occur, sometimes even micro capillary pores may occur. So it is always preferable that one should bear in mind that we have to avoid porosity in concrete in the best possible manner. Just to give you an example, in college we are always taught that high water cement ratio gives lower strength. However, if you just see the table, which is, go to the next slide. Yeah. However, if you see this table, the water cement ratio, when it increases from 0.35 and goes to 0.5, the permeability increases 10 times. And when it goes from 0.5 to 0.65, it increases thousand times. So slight increase in water to cement ratio can make an enormous difference in permeability and that is because this causes lesser strength as well as more porosity in your concrete. So this is a very important thing, a very simple thing to understand but often not practiced at the site. Next. Next, another very important factor which is to be seen is water cement ratio versus the time after which the capillary pores get blocked. If you notice around 0.4, if the water cement ratio of the concrete mix is 0.4, then within three days the concrete becomes virtually impermeable because the capillary pores get blocked very fast. If you go down to the bottom of the table and if it water to cement ratio exceeds 0.7 then it goes to infinity means the concrete will be like a sieve allowing the water to enter inside the concrete allowing the chemicals to enter inside the concrete and cause various other problems to concrete. Here is a beautiful picture of a dilapidated building with completely damaged concrete and this picture has been taken, a photograph has been taken during the 16th year life of the structure. So it's like constructing a human or con having a human being of 16 years and all sorts of problems of sickness and weakness. This is a beam column junction. Fortunately these days uh, beam column junctions are very well planned and we use a sort of flowing concrete or self-compacting concrete and therefore they are very dense. But in the earlier days uh, they were not so because the planning of the reinforcement at the joints or at the junctions was not done properly and thereby when placing the concrete, the concrete segregated and gave the look which you see in the photograph. So it is quite porous at the joint. Honeycombs due to poor placement and compaction. Again, you can see the cantilever slab. The reinforcement is placed very close to the cover and therefore there are honeycombs, etc. And this chacha is not going to last long. Honeycombings also occur due to Concrete mix design. Generally, concrete mix design is never done at most of the sites in our country. And even if it is done, it is not properly supervised for workability of the concrete, for cohesiveness and lean mix. 
in the lower photograph left hand side you can see my guru mr remedios who is demonstrating to the worker how to make a good cohesive mix by forming a laddu uh, please go ahead ashwarya go ahead this problem is likely to occur because i will always forget to say next improper mix design uh, sorry improper mixing is another problem most of our mixers do not mix concrete we are lucky that we have concrete coming in with very good mixers and as a result you get better quality concrete however proportioning is equally important mix design is equally important only then you can get proper mixing done and also proper quality concrete is produced next many combs can also next you can complete this slide here sometimes what happens is the workability which we have planned due to the delay in placing the concrete becomes stiff and it needs more effort to vibrate or to compact the concrete and because the concrete workability is lost you don't get proper quality concrete and when you de shutter you find some honeycombings and segregation poor placing due to densely reinforced beam column junction you can see here this is a, a very interesting view you can see the concrete cannot even go through the bars it's a barrier of bars reinforcement it is not planned properly and the third photograph shows pumping of concrete against obstruction of reinforcement clearly showing segregation the result is that the mortar sticks to the bars and the aggregates fall below causing an economy next Honeycombing mainly occurs due to segregation. On the left hand side, you can see the photograph of the first 500 megawatt EG deck, which had a lot of quality problems because the placing was not done properly. And even though the mix was very good and pumpable, but the placing was not done properly due to elephant trunks or proper pipe shoots used during the placement on the right hand side you see a big column no go back go back go back ashwarya uh, stay there okay the columns is very deep and it is placed in one go from the top as a result there is a massive segregation and you can call it a see through concrete you can see what type of bars and everything is visible and it is unfortunately the proper technique of placing was not followed i will show you what proper technique is at a later stage here you can see after the formwork is removed you are in for a surprise the arrows show on one side honeycombs and the other side massive voids we can call them rat holes or it is like looking at footsteps of the father of the nation he couldn't have gone into the concrete and made these footsteps so segregation due to improper placing is a very very important aspect which we 
rarely supervise the placement. Rarely people supervise the placement. And they are not very particular about segregation. Then you get concrete like this. Next. 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 Yeah, you can see that. Honeycombs due to compaction and form work. Poor compaction can occur if the mix does not have proper workability or if there are not proper needle vibrators being used. Many a times, people avoid putting end stoppers and the worker has no choice but to constrain of not vibrating the mix at the end of the beam because there is no end stop. You can see that in the photographs below. End stoppers are missing. Even the needle vibrator, how to correctly handle it. The worker must know and the supervisor must also know how to supervise it. You can see another very important thing in the next slide, please. Many a times, there are what for formers use in concrete st structural members. But if there is no escape for the air, you see, when we compact and vibrate the concrete, the air trapped gets dissipated. And many a times, if there is no escape, it goes and sits below the void former, like you see on the beam on the left hand side top slide. Inclined form work also creates problem. The air gets entrapped because it cannot easily escape from the top because of the inclined form work. So one has to do gentle tapping from outside using a man or a wooden hammer and gently tapping the that the air escapes from the top. Many a times, proper covers are not provided. Concrete covers are not adequate. Or if the cover is very small, the needle vibrator does not vibrate the concrete properly in the cover portion. We never use foam vibrators or shutter vibrators scarcely they are used unless in precast uh, pre-stress beams uh, where they are manufactured for the metros etc and there we have found that the concrete finish comes okay because you are vibrating the concrete externally from the foam work also but in cases where we only use needle vibrators most often the space between the formwork and the reinforcement cage, the concrete does not flow and is not properly vibrated. You can see it in the bottom picture of the slide. Next. Now I will show you how the correct practices are. Like, first of all, you must space the bars properly so that the concrete goes into the lower layers of the structural member without segregation. Minimizing the restriction due to reinforcement steel congestion can be done by resizing the bars. You can use larger diameter bars and also you can bunch the bars together. It is allowed, allowed as per the standard IS456 and as far as possible you should not have lapping done at one point because laps will again create 
congestion. If you are doing pump concrete and deep beams or foundations, then it is better that you plan openings through which the hose pipe is inserted inside and make sure that the pipe sleeves are made in such a manner that they are slightly bigger than the outer diameter of the hose pipe. Hose pipe can be also said as elephant trunk and it goes right down. You can see on the left hand side, the concrete is going right down into the three meter deep beam without segregation, no splatter on the reinforcement bars with mortar is seen, it's a clean operation. And on the right hand side, you can see the bunch bars and the properly spaced bars. Even in the cover region, we made sure that the 60 millimeter needle goes right down when it is vibrated. Between the reinforcement and the formwork, there is enough gap to vibrate the concrete. Coal joints. In plain concrete, coal joint is a plane of weakness in concrete. Between two concretes placed subsequent to each other. I'm especially using the word plain concrete because in reinforced concrete, in pre-stress reinforced concrete, there are bars which take care of the shear failure, if at all it is not properly designed, then there might be a problem. Otherwise, uh, the steel is enough to take care of the weakness in concrete due to the subsequent layer. Now what happens is the coal joint is formed due to interruption or delay in concreting operation. When the first batch of the concrete has already undergone initial or final set before the subsequent batch of concrete is placed and compacted adjacent or over it, it forms a coal joint. Coal joints can be avoided. One must understand that this is like knitting two cloth pieces together. You have to do full knitting together of the batches and layers of concrete under. Such that when you are vibrating the top layer of concrete with a needle vibrator, it should be able to conveniently go down into the lower layer, which has still not achieved the initial or final set, and thereby monolithically get knitted together. And this avoids the weakness in concrete and solves the durability problem. Uh, you can see here, even well compacted concrete if the lower layer is set and subsequent layer is put later on, can show indications of coal joints. This is one of the most important points I would like to stress. This is one of the most important points I would like to stress is the problem of plastic shrinkage cracks. In most of the construction, if you don't take precautions, you will definitely get plastic shrinkage cracks. Many a times, the customer feels that it is because of the cement which is sold to him or her, the cracks are occurring more or less. Or sometimes, luckily now, the cement industry is uh, protected by the ready mix concrete players. So they will feel that the ready mix concrete was not properly designed or maybe placed and causing cracks. 
no rmc supplier will supply cracks no cement supplier does supply cracks they occur due to the plastic shrinkage of cracks and concrete if they are not taken care of in the very initial stage within few minutes of their placing will show indication of crack especially in thin walls and slabs the early drying conditions the early drying conditions are the enemies of concrete what happens is the concrete starts losing water in the initial stage very very it is like a young child needs to be protected due to high ambient temperatures or hot sun due to low humidity and due to high wind these are the three enemies of concrete when young and fresh the water starts evaporating and due to the loss of water from the surface the cracks start appearing it is observed that the if the evaporation rate exceeds 1 kg per square meter per hour plastic shrinkage cracks are expected to occur i will later on show you how it is prevented or you can even eliminate it completely reinforcement very close to the top surface also show indication of cracks secondary causes could be low rate of bleeding now bleeding is when the excess water comes up on the surface due to compaction water is indicated as a blood of concrete now when the bleeding rate is low not enough water comes on the surface there will be definitely indication of plastic shrinkage cracks are you to max ke taj bhuli jao ji preventive measures improve early curing the best way to improve early curing is to spread a plastic sheet on the surface of the slab please go back please go back press press uh, uh, by putting plastic sheet on the surface of the slab which is cast which gives a protection and the water if it is trying to come out gets condensed on the plastic sheet and protects the concrete from future drying use of cohesive mix avoiding gap graded aggregates and gap graded cement and controlling the evaporation rate which is not in your hands completely 2.5 kg per square meter per hour plastic sheet, sheet uh, cracks can be avoided next yeah i'll go to this the best way to effectively cure horizontal uh, cure horizontal concrete surface is the plastic sheet as i said earlier now on one of the sites where we had supplied cement there were excessive cracks now remember shrinkage cracks can come right through because concrete is very fresh at that time and definitely it will give problems of leakage and seepage so they have to be avoided at all cost if you spread a plastic sheet like you see on the right hand side photograph the water condenses on the plastic sheet and gives 100% humidity between the concrete freshly cast concrete and the sheet it is like one perspiring and the shirt or the whatever you are wearing sticks to your skin so this is a good sign for concrete because concrete will never crack 
and will never need water if it is at 100% humidity environment. So the customer complained and we went there with this plastic sheet and demonstrated to the customer. This next slab which was cast, you can see there is about five to six inches of water ponded on the surface of this concrete and no cracks, through cracks appear. Or it almost eliminated this plastic shrinkage crack totally. Everywhere in India, this is a major problem. And I have been advocating the use of plastic sheet. Still, I would say that 70 to 80 percent have never heard of this particular preventive measure. I would request the site engineers and their colleagues to note that this is a very, very important issue and can cause problems. Even if you do waterproofing subsequently on the slab, it will leak after five to 10 years because the original concrete was not crack free. It is very, very, very important. Again, placing of concrete done manually by our workers who are generally working in the agricultural sector of our country when the construction is not picking up. Now they have a tendency to spin seeds and main laser, et etc., in the fields. When they are placing concrete, they should be told don't spin the camilla or the container. If the concrete will get segregated and you will have voids in your concrete. Just dump the concrete in the foam board and then vibrate it subsequently as early as possible so that the concrete gets densified and properly compact. How to handle the vibrator? You can see here. This is correctly handling of the needle vibrator. The operator holds the needle through the flexible hose at least two feet away from the junction between the needle and the hose. Sorry. This is one very, very important thing. We have generally seen that needles with uh, diameter of 60 millimeters are better compacting equipment. Many a times the operator of the is tempted to touch the reinforcement or form work because some of the concrete has spilled over the reinforcement and form work. And this action of his or sometimes the supervisor also requests him to do that creates a problem with the needle the needle gets working out of order and you have a problem to replace the needle moment you hear the jarring sound like that it is always very important that immediately you should check the operator and ask him not to touch either the postman or the form. Next. Another very important point which I have noticed is during the construction of RCC structure and then the filler walls in between either using blocks or bricks. The main leakage takes place at the junction between the beam and the wall which is constructed. Generally, the walls are constructed later on from inside of the building. And when it reaches the top or the soffit of the beam, there are small gaps which are not properly filled up by the mortar. And later on, 
because of the brick block coefficient of thermal expansion being different than the RCC, cracks develop and water seepages become very, very clear that the joint has opened up. And the precaution for this particular thing is, here you can see on the left hand side, the the external face of the building which the mason is not able to see and do unless he does the external plaster my advice is that before doing the external plaster seal all these openings properly cure them for at least three or seven days and then do your plaster this is very, very important. You can see on the other slide side, the photograph of a joint properly filled up between the column and the brick wall. Same thing you should do for the plaster also. If you notice these days, the fashion of doing plaster in two layers is gone. Because the workers want to do a fast job, the owners would like their building to be completed fast therefore they do in a single coat the whole concept of plaster sealing the gaps in the masonry properly and is lost because first the base coat has to be applied which is generally thicker and thicker plaster will crack, crack faster. So that particular thicker coat is cured for seven days, seven days, mind you. And then only the final finishing coat, which is very thin, is applied so that any cracks which have appeared on the base coat are sealed properly. This is a very, very important point also in case you want that your plaster should be deep proof next point next another thing i have observed is the preparation of the mortar the preparation of the mortar is done using large quantity of sand and cement and the mix is done in such a manner that the mason is unable to finish the mortar within a matter of say 30 minutes. When it is not done, then they put more water on the half set plaster and again remix it Sometimes they put some cement on it. So the entire water to cement ratio goes for a toss. And it may even exceed 0 0.8, 0 0.9, or it may even become one. In concrete or in plaster, if the water cement ratio is very high, durability will be lost and cracks will be formed. And therefore you will lose the purpose of the plaster completely. If you are not careful, you must restrict the worker not to use such a plaster because it is with water cementation. It's very, very important. Often, to economize people in many cities even in mumbai have forgotten the use of double scaffolding for plaster they use single scaffolding and the scaffolding yes please next wait the next step is they insert a single scaffolding what we call as adis or small bamboos into the wall by making holes. 
after the first coat is done they put the second coat and when they are putting the second coat they remove this adis gradually and come down next and you can clearly see that there are several patches of plaster done with different materials which will shrink subsequently and cause leakage so while repairing a building if you are going going to make holes like this because you want to economize and use single scaffolding you are asking for trouble in one of my chairs a lady civil engineer told me that sir this is my building when it was repaired it is my building sir and you know sir that after the building was repaired it leaked more than what was happening earlier so i said naturally you have made so many entry points for water to come in in the next monsoon and you have asked for trouble so it is very very important that you should avoid single scaffolding because workers are not going to be careful they are not going to patch up these things with the same quality of mortar etc like the plaster and therefore you are asking for trouble use double scaffold it you don't have to insert any adis or things inside the masonry creating damage my very strong opinion is in repairs wherever there are no leakages don't do replastering don't do replaster only do repair uh, repairs where there are leakages zones and that also in a proper manner next next sorry i next please now which is the best cement to be one more click next the next slide but only click ashwarya good morning just click ah that's all okay there's always a argument which is the best cement to be used etc opc ppc slag cement all are generally used in plaster but the right type of cement is the masonry cement which are unfortunately is not manufactured in our country you get ready mix mortar which contains the masonry cement inside is a better option than using sand and concrete cements as mortar if you take a look at the specification and standard of the masonry cement you will be surprised that in the earlier days a few years back before the masonry code was revised it was recommended air entrainment minimum 12% later on after the revision i don't know for what reason they reduced the specification to 6% instead of 12% minimum for air entry and the water retention there's a method of testing water retention there's a method of testing which was earlier specified as 70% now reduced to 60% uh, we are under a very funny scenario we have new materials coming in but no standards 
and sometimes materials which are never used the standards are revised actually there is no feedback because the material never came and the reason for revision of the code only one reason i could see is because the bs code or the astm codes were revised we revised our indian code also now there are two important properties like air entrainment even with our normal mortar which we make you can improve the air entrainment by adding an air entraining at mixture and then measure it so that you can fix the quantity of air entrainment so that it gives at least 6% air entrainment as per the present standard again water retention you can improve there are various options there are chemicals available to improve the water retention and there are minerals like fly ash and slag which you can use this water retention and can be easily improved and you can get very comfortably 60% water retention if you add some chemicals some polymers and or some of the mineral elements mix mortar i have seen abroad being used and they use a spraying device or a pump to place you can see the slide on the right hand side has no rebound when we manually do plastering we get a lot of rebound and lot of wastage and then if that wastage is used you land up with a problem of poor quality so if you can put right chemical do not give it up then be less wastage and better quality to sum up remember defects can be defects can be disastrous and the consequences will be serious entry of water occurs leading to leakages chemicals like chlorides and sulfates will enter the concrete usually the chlorides and sulfates enter along with the moisture or water in concrete and when chlorides attack the steel corrosion happens and when steel corrodes it expands to almost six times its original size because of the rust formation and that results in cracking of the concrete and the cracking of the concrete results in loss of strength stiffness and also porosity increases thereby reducing the load carrying capacity of the structure and it can go to such an extent that ultimately this is a photograph taken in one of the bombay buildings where the slab obviously due to plastic shrinkage cracks must have leaked leaked and leaked till the concrete started spalling because of the corrosion of the bars and many a times we get accidents when lumps of concrete have fallen on their head or sometimes even the ceiling fan comes down now this lady was photographed during one of the repairs uh, of one of the buildings in mumbai 
and she was complaining that first the contractor told that because there are cracks on the wall you put tiles without seeing the source of leakage without removing the rust in the reinforcement and after some times the tiles also started cracking and then they said we will have to remove all the tiles and redo the tiling work and this poor lady had no money to spend on further repairs so she is praying to god and hope her prayers will be answered soon because she is sitting below this beam if one chunk falls on her head she will have no more problems of repairs there are some very innovative suggestions uh, once uh, this is in a, a building in pichur belonging to an nri and the roof and the entire building was leaky so he found a very innovative solution he put another slab over the entire building so that the water does not come through and he should not have leakages in his building but most of us are in big cities not nris we don't get fat salaries to have two roofs over one building we cannot afford two roofs over one building or two wives in one kitchen many a times it so happens that the occupant comes a little later and starts modifying his flat in every way possible this not only causes structural damage to the building and also subsequent collapse of the building but also causes leakages now here the occupant on the top floor has converted his kitchen to toilet block and has not done the plumbing and waterproofing properly and the lady on the lower floor wonders why the food is tasty and now because all that dirty water enters the pots and pans while she is cooking to conclude let me summarize the points you must have heard during the world cup football there was all the octopus which was predicting the results of the matches and it predicted that germans will lose and french will win and his prediction came right and the some some germans killed the octopus and ate it up because they lost the match here let us see what the octopus predicts for us for defect free water tight concrete the first you must have proper design and specification this is very very important because these are the genes which you give to the concrete when it is born or before it is born the parental genes selection of proper materials not only of good quality or consistent quality but also to complement each other then we have seven steps for making concrete batching mixing transporting placing compacting finishing and last but not the least curing so all these have to be executed properly the next is provide proper concrete cover to reinforcements very important so that corrosion does not take place prevent macro and micro defects in concrete so excess water will dry out and cause problems of cracks and also the porosity water cement ratio 
all these things have to be avoided to avoid this defect. Prevent pole joints, which I already explained. Prevent shrinkage, both plastic and dry. Plastic shrinkage are ex explained at a greater length. Drying shrinkage needs to be covered. Maybe in my one of my next lectures, I will cover that along with the ease of cracking, basics of cracking. And impermeability and volume stability. Volume stability means again shrinkage, which causes the crack. Next. Next. So if you have the, if I can, I have that attitude, so you can, and we all can, knock the tea out of the can and produce def defect-free concrete. There is a strong need to train not only workers but also engineers because many things which we learn in theory in the educational institute are not covered for practical purposes. The practical pur knowledge comes when we work in the field and probably it is too late to learn these problems and therefore engineers need training before they launch into the field for construction. Supervision is the key. Yes, yes skilled workers are required to have proper quality of work. At all costs, carelessness, ignorance, negligence, and greed at all levels needs to be removed. And you must have the attitude to totally reject the bad work which is done so that the contractor or the worker does not repeat it. Uh, with this, I thank Shelly, MD of QC Creek and his team for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. I must also talk to my wife, uh, I must also thank my wife for her love and participants for your presence and good wishes. Now questions uh, you may please send to Shelly on his email and he will put them to me one after another. There's very little time for questions. I think we can answer a few of them.